6,330 pounds on a beautiful rainy day here at Haywood RV of Coldwater, Michigan. This is the new 3100 QB Passport, and it's easy to not realize it at first, but this is really kind of the upscale, up-level trim package and juiced-up version of something like a 292 BH Passport SL here in the Jazzy GT series. And even though recording videos like this on a rainy day, not necessarily my favorite thing to do. We have the dedication, we still get it done here at Halid RV. But really, this is the perfect kind of day to look at a camper like this because this is the kind of camper you want on a rainy day since it has that sort of like fully enclosed rear bunkhouse so that the kids kind of have their own space, mom and dad can enjoy the living room, the kids have their little bedroom, everyone can kind of float in and out. And you're not gonna go you know, cabin crazy and want to kill each other on a rainy day stuck inside the camper like this. It also helps that it's got a pretty big awning as we'll see later. Now I had described this as sort of a 292 BH Passport SL on steroids. And where you really see the difference is in the living area, the entertainment arrangement. Now the bunk has a different shape to it, but it's about the same size, the bathroom, the bedroom, they're nearly the same size. This one has a shower instead of a tub, which is kind of neat. But um, the entertainment here, whether it's the sofa where I'm standing or the dinette, it's all kind of centered around easy viewing from our TV area here. And you might notice how this TV can swing out to easily face uh, any seating area. And that's the thing that many uh, one-slide private rear bunkhouses lack, is a good view of that thing right there. So if entertainment's important to you, look at the 3100 QB Passport GT. If entertainment's less important to you, you prefer just to save a little money, Look at the 292 BH Passport SL. They both hit all the major notes. They just do it differently. Now, up here in the GT series, you'll find things like we've got a larger, 33% uh, larger at that, 8 cubic foot fridge freezer. Um, if you notice on the side of our dinette, too, they've also got all kinds of little outlets there. So if the kids need all kinds of little rainy day device charging, you got it. And on a rainy day like today, you're going to appreciate it. You see that we've got doors for easy access to the storage below that dinette. But what's nice is they're using the same full-size True U dinette, seven foot long, seven, or pardon me, <laughs> nope, not 70, 44 inches deep as they do in uh, pretty much any of their passports. They're very good about using full-size large dinette. Now I've turned off all the direct lighting. I've done what I like to call stealth mode here, where all of our main lights have been killed. Now obviously I've got some light from outside bleeding in through the windows through those full privacy shades that we have. But you see that you've got these little night lights that kind of run under the dinette. You'll see one over here in the hallway. So whether you're coming into the camper at night or if somebody needs to see their way to the bathroom in the evening hours, they can always do that. Now, if you don't like the blue lights, that's all it takes and you can get rid of those blue lights. But the fact is they're there if you need them, gone if you don't. Another neat thing here above this big adult size sleeper dinette is the fact that the lighting within the slide out is actually dimmer and touch sensitive. So uh, if you, uh, you notice how it has positional memory, like right now the lights are all the way up, you can bring the lights all the way down and it will remember the lights on low. So if you have the lights on low in the evening, when you wake up in the morning, you probably still want them low. You don't want them blinding you like that and squinting real hard. That's what's kind of cool here, is the different sort of, uh, you know, options and independent user comfort levels. Like, I know some people have kids who might be, like, uh, light sensitive. I know there's certain levels of uh, autism or like that, that shock doesn't, the kids don't really do well with that. Well, again, this is just kind of one of those little family-friendly features that you have going on right here. And when you see the lights off and on like that, you can really tell the difference. They've done a very good job putting some real high intensity lighting in here, right next to the main door. In addition to that little night light, they also have motion lighting. Now, if you want, you can just turn this off or you could hard turn it on, or you can activate motion mode like I've done right there. As we come back from our bunkhouse portion of the tour, watch that light. It'll be off and it'll kick on as we get near. It's kind of cool. So it's right next to our entry door. And what's nice, is this window in the door that still lets extra light into the RV, if that light was always on in the evening hours, you'd have a nice collection of bugs right outside that door hovering around that glowing window. Well, now it's only going to turn on when we need it. So you won't get those nice collection of bugs in the camper. And you won't get that mouthful of gnats right when you get back to your campsite. 
You have the option, and we do it almost every chance we get here at Halo RV, put the larger 15,000 BTU central air conditioner up here in this beautiful barreled vaulted ceiling, which makes this whole thing look and feel larger. And one of the cool things in this model is that it gives us an absolutely awesome kitchen arrangement with plenty of storage and excellent counter space, including you'll see as we go through that little countertop extension open up right about meow. Up top over our cooking area, right at the apex of that vaulted ceiling, they have a skylight, but it's more than just that. It's also a vent, so heat pools upward, and in a vaulted ceiling like this, right above the cooking area of the RV, you're going to have a nice collection of heat buildup right there. Well, having a ceiling vent right there makes a ton of sense and will organically spill a ton of heat out of the RV, again, especially if you're cooking. Um, right across from the kitchen window, you've got that dining window, so you get good breezes in your seating areas. All of our cabinetry is pocket screwed, by the way. We've got hardwood cabinet doors. That is the exact same type of cabinet construction you'll see all the way up through Montana fifth wheels, ladies and gentlemen. I also love the fact that they're very good about uh, plenty of lighting here in the kitchen. Now you've got, it's easy to miss, you've got a set of power outlets right there. But you've also got a set of easy reach power outlets over on the right hand side next to that sink. Speaking of which, that is a big, beautiful stainless farm sink where you can actually get some big pots and pans and actually do some cleaning in there. But why tell you about it when we can just as easily take a quick look at it, right? What's cool about this, you've got that high rise sprayer faucet, that big stainless farm sink. It's nice and deep. You can actually do some real uh, like cleaning work in there, but it doesn't interfere with the bulk of your prep space It's not like you have to have the sink cover there all the time One of the things I like about this model is our primary prep space is staring directly out a window over here on the campsite So even if you're tied up in the kitchen Like maybe you're throwing together a little bowl of soup for one of the kids or something like that You hear bloody murder screaming outside you can see one of your kids trying to kill the other kid or whatever You know what I mean? You can keep an eye on them. That's my point. All of our countertops here in the kitchen are a sealed edge material. So around this big sink, if you do happen to splash some water, no big deal. You see that we got drawers down to the floor and even the stovetops getting in on the action of providing some prep space. And uh, everything we've looked at so far, this is nice. But frankly, that ain't even half the storage of the kitchen because we have what I like to call the old pantry tainment center over here. This entire corner nook thing, whatever you want to call it, the whole darn thing is storage. This is really your primary pantry space. And it's not like it's sort of a square peg in a round hole. It really works. It's, it, it, you kind of don't realize it, but it's almost like the TV is in the kitchen, but the TV, as you can see, swings out to face our seating areas so well that it gets the job done, and it gets the job done very well. So for entertainment, obviously, like I just said, TV swings out, but we got a Bluetooth DVD player. We also have this really handy, um, like, charging station pocket down here. That is also the perfect place if you want to do something like add a Blu-ray or a satellite system. You've got all the proper jumpers and everything down there to make all of that happen. Taking a quick peek back here, you might have noticed when we were in stealth mode, I had this uh, door closed. This is a sliding pocket privacy door, and this is an interesting L-shaped quad bunk. And just like its little sister, the 292BH Passport here at Halid RV, one of the things that I think makes this one work so well is right here that we're looking at. It's that fourth separate bunk. This has four separate individual bunk spaces. But what this floor plan allows for, there's a lot of people like they have, like, I got like two kids, but like my son, he's 14, he's like 6'2". Well, look at this. We've got a pair of top and bottom eight foot long sleeping spaces, basically. And have you noticed? There are household and USB outlets for each sleeping area. So there, there's eight USB plugs, and there's eight household plugs split across four outlets of each variety back here. And you've got awesome breeze windows right here, again, over on the campsite for the kids. We've got one of my favorite things, Password does so well, that open air ladder wall, which makes the whole thing look and feel larger. We've also got that cargo door over here, which during the daytime, you're probably not going to use that very much. But again, for transit, having the ability to store stuff back here is awesome. And there's a huge chunk of like bonus trunk space down here for the kiddo. And that big chunk of space ain't no joke. And this ain't no jive turkey. You got room for big totes, duffel bags, whatever down here. 
You know, this is that great space where, even if it's kids' toys, that is just, it's begging you to throw some totes down there to be able to easily access and slide some storage around. It's a handy dandy little space. Flipping us around the other direction, again, you can clearly see how that TV can be twisted around to face over here toward that big seven foot dinette. There's that dimmer switch right next to that refrigerator handle. That's the thing I was playing with earlier. Now, what's kind of cool here, that TV could just as easily face the other way. So if you want to be like on Boardwalk and Park Place with that TV virtually just inches from your face, you could. But what's nice is that also opens up to be a big old hide -a bed And opening this hide -a bed really kind of brings a couple neat things to light. First of all, notice that it doesn't cut the camper off. You can still walk through the RV when that hide -a bed is in use. So you're not getting cut off from like your kitchen and the coffee maker and that morning survival kit. <laughs> Perfect timing. Speaking of bringing things to light, remember how I said when we're in the bunk area we get a chance to look at that motion sense light? As you get a little bit closer here, one, two, three, Alakazam, there you go. Right when you walk in that door, you know, I'm about a good three feet from it. It's got a nice proximity sort of detection about it. But what I was, uh, the other thing that this kind of brings to light, uh, again, no pun intended, is the fact that this camper is not good for just sleeping mom and dad in the bedroom and then a couple kids in the back. You can sleep adults on this hide -a bed You can sleep adults on that u dinette. You can sleep adults across those rear wall, like, eight-foot beds. This is a great big kid and adult-based floor plan, not just mom and dad with a couple newborns kind of thing. Then just little details. Like, they could have just put a sofa on that wall and called it good. But that little side stand, that power outlet right there, you know, keeping a phone, a device, something charged up, just nice little touch. Keeping the switches up high so the kiddos can't get to them. Uh, just a little coat rack by the door. Not even a big major thing, but it's the little things that make the big difference to me, you know? Bathroom in here, we've got our foot flush stool, and you notice that there are no floor vents, you know, in any sort of major traffic area where you're going to step on them or spill something in them and cause a mess. We've got a large radius shower also, and having that skylight all the way as far as I can against the sidewall in conjunction with that vaulted ceiling makes this bathroom pretty darn friendly for big people like me. And I tell you, I don't feel cramped in here. I've got plenty of leg room. I can stand up. I can stretch my arms out. You can get dressed in this thing. It's nice. It's nice that we have a shower, not a tub. Again, one of the big differences between the 3100 here and the 292 Passport SL. Uh, the uh, bedroom, a lot of these passports of bedrooms are all very, very similar, and that's a good thing because they do a very good bedroom. You've got those large mirrored hanging wardrobe closets. I got the one open so you can see inside of there. That ship lap accent wall. And we do have a 60 by 80 residential size queen bed in here. Both sides of the bed also have these extended side stands, and they have both household and USB outlets. Anywhere that you sit or sleep, you're going to be able to like plug in a phone, basically. Pardon the brevity of this outside tour with the weather being how it is. I'm going to give you just kind of a nice little fly by the exterior here. And then I'm going to kind of just rattle off some detail features later, maybe from my office or something like that. Got that painted nose cap. Neat, neat thing on Keystones is that all of their paintwork is covered under their three-year structural warranty. This also has a different kind of chassis. It's made with HSLA steel. It means high strength, low alloy. Also means lighter but stronger. And there's a simple side mount solar prep plug up there. We've got black tank flush, outside shower, and down below you will find this is pretty good for extended season use with a heated enclosed belly with a really aggressive 30,000 BTU furnace. All of our windows open for airflow. All of our windows are tinted to keep the nosy neighbors and Mr. Sunshine out. And just like we saw inside, you've got this awesome cargo door here. Like I said, this is kind of like the 292 BH on steroids. If you're really looking for a big place for a lot of travel and cargo, you've got an awesome spot for it right here. And this has the same deadbolt mechanism as your main entry door. So security concerns, not going to be an issue there. This does have the key TV system that Keystone developed, so you don't need to worry about a signal antenna booster kind of thing. If you don't know what that means, basically watching TV and jumping between like park cable and antenna TV is easier in a Keystone than just about anything else. We're back up camera ready. We've also got a very handy easy tilt awning that on a rainy day like today is probably going to be your best friend. One more thing before I wrap up shop outside here. This also does have wide stance stability axles so that uh, when you're towing the RV, it doesn't tend to sway and bounce as much. And those more ride stable steps keep the trailer from rocking and rolling as the kids rock and roll around inside or come and go. 
And a very brief look over here at the patio side with the awning open. I just want you to get a, a sense of the scope and the scale of the awning. These are easy tilt arms. So even though it's kind of a rainy day like today, two things. This does have an auto rain dump. Do you see how that water is actually spilling off the front of it right now? It's purposely actually uh, dropping that arm just enough to let the rain pressure off of it and then, you know, basically picking itself back up. You can also manually crank these awning arms very quickly and easily with two fingers. And I do want to give us a very brief look at the little camp kitchenette so I can get that closed up. There are dual wing out countertops so that you do have some prep space out here and you can see how you do have this kind of neat little sink with um, kind of like double fixtures. You've got either a sort of campsite shower hose cleanup courtesy station or that white scorpion tail style sink thing right there. And these magnet latches holding this open also make it very easy to close in weather like this. So there's her all closed up. And here's what I mean by two finger easy awning. On a rainy day like this, you go like that and voila. Now we've got an awning crank right here where it's just gonna direct all that water to kind of rain off of this corner. And what that does is it keeps your awning from kind of auto tilting up and down so that you don't get rain spray unexpectedly under your patio space so that you can kind of plan on where you have your chairs and you can keep yourself as dry as possible while still expanding your living space to the greatest degree that you really can. Now, just because of the weather, we're actually going to hop back inside my office and I'm going to tell you a little more about the construction of this thing. And I don't normally do a little office segment like this in my video tours but the weather obviously was just not cooperating so a little more under the skin information on passports one of the big things with them is that they have an all aluminum structure and really if we're going to be super nitpicky they technically have a galvanized stamped steel roof truss system every 16 inches on center which is what you see in some very high-end fifth wheels actually most fifth wheels don't even use galvanized steel trusses anymore they've gone back to wood trusses so that's a high-end weight-saving item that passports use. Everything else is going to be an all-aluminum structure. Behind that nose cap that's covered by the three-year, well, the whole thing's got the three-year structural coverage, but the walls, the floor are both laminated. Uh, the rear wall is laminated. The front wall has aluminum studs going all the way down the thing. So that's one of the things that helps keep it very rigid, but very lightweight. Uh, I mentioned the chassis, a big thing on that. There's nothing wrong with an I-beam frame, but uh, Passports use, it's like a Z chassis. Um, it's made with what's called high strength, low alloy steel. And the idea behind it is that like, if you want a good house, you start with a good foundation, right? Well, there's nothing wrong with an I-beam foundation. It's just that Passports are using one that's better. It ain't cheaper though, so that is one of those things. Now the more ride steps, I kinda, I think I was in such a hurry in the rain, I sort of flubbed how I meant to say that. I think I said that it'll help keep the trailer from rocking and rolling when the kids are inside. That's not at all what it does, that's what stabilizer jacks do. But as everybody's walking in and out of those steps, it's gonna keep the trailer from doing this. So if you don't have sea legs, if you're kinda seasick, that's something you're truly going to appreciate a great deal. Um, regarding the underbelly package on that, Passports aren't trying to be a zero degraded rig. That's what their big sister Cougar kind of comes in to do. Passports made to be the you know right features, right weight, right price. And part of that right features is the fact that most people, generally speaking, aren't camping, especially with a family, when there's snowflakes flying. If it's going to dip below freezing, which here in the Imperial system is 32 degrees, not zero, remember that. People still associate zero degrees with freezing, as funny as that is. If it's going to dip below freezing and then come back up, you'll never have to worry about your water system and a passport. If it's going to stay hard frozen for a while, you need to get it winterized, but that thing will actually maintain its cabin temperature shockingly well. I've been in passports in January in sub-freezing weather and actually just been able to take off a coat and walk around in my normal clothes like I am right now. They do a surprisingly good job in conditions like that. So hopefully that helps give you an idea of kind of the, the things that passports bring to, to the table, like the, uh, you know, the wide stance axles, because that is a fairly long trailer, but it's well within the weight of a half ton towable sort of segment. Length is a problem for a lot of trailers being too long for a lot of shorter wheelbase half tons, but those wide stance axles, without getting super technical help, you kind of cheat the wheelbase a little bit. So if you got a big tow package SUV, you got a half ton, you don't want to get rid of your daily driver, your family mover, man, that trailer kind of fits the bill. 
And if you don't need all the bells and whistles, then look at the Little Brother version, the 292 BH Passport. You're not going to be disappointed with what you see there. Or if you're looking at the 292 and you're like, I wish it just had a little more of this, that, or the other thing. I think you're going to like the 3100 QB. They're the same but different. And I think they're the same but different enough that they really coexist pretty peacefully with one another. And I think I've spent more time talking to you here in my nice, warm, comfortable, dry office than the entirety of the exterior portion of that video. But the rain was just, nah, it's coming in at funny angles and it just wasn't being nice to the camera. So, remember that we don't do hidden dealer fees, but we do everything else. We do hitching pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer package deals, RV delivery, and everything else in between. So take care, stay safe, have fun, stay dry, and happy camping, everyone.